Annabelle Williams is a vocal coach, renowned for her work on ITV's The X Factor and Britain's Got Talent, plus head vocal coach on the current BBC Waitings winner, I Can See Your Voice. Annabelle has tutored uh, many singers and after over 20 years of experience has just launched an app called The Vocal Coach, which helps both beginners and established singers. And she says that it's an app that she can truly believes can help overcome certain mental health issues in singers and artists as they return from lockdown, bringing back the confidence and reassurance they need. Hi, Annabelle. Hi, thanks for having me. First of all, how did you become a vocal coach? Quite by accident, to be honest with you. Um, I started coaching my friends when I was at music college. Uh, I think because I'd already had singing and piano lessons from the age of 11. And then when I went to college, they were teaching a lot of the stuff that I'd already done um, in terms of theory, piano, sight singing, sight reading, that sort of thing. So I just started helping out a few friends. And I remember this girl that I was helping say to me, oh I get it now like you you explain it so much more simply and you make it make sense to me and I and I sort of helping and showing people and I always knew that I, like things didn't need to be explained in a difficult way I felt like things needed didn't need to be made complicated when they were explained to people I just thought you know it, it makes sense to try and um, you know, whatever it takes to, to get that information to that person. And obviously it's the, it's the teacher's job to have different ways of explaining one thing. So that because obviously everybody learns differently. And um, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. And I, and I kind of started teaching my, my friends in, in college and I actually started covering teachers at college in the years below me. Um, and then, and I was running a jazz workshop um, for the National Youth Jazz Orchestra, and I just kind of fell into it that way, really. And alongside my career as being a singer and a backing singer and vocal arranger, it was just always there, and I always loved it, and I really, really get a lot out of it. So, yeah, it happened by accident, but it's something I've done for 21, 22 years now, and absolutely love it. But before you went to music school, were you planning to be a kind of a singer, a, a pop? You wanted to be a pop star? Absolutely. I moved to London to study music and become, you know, the next Mariah Carey. And that was all the plan. Always the plan. Yeah. And, uh, and I, was, I was going to be, you know, an artist, a recording artist. But for me, really, I just, if I'm completely honest, I felt like I was doing that because that's what I was supposed to do. And I never really... I never really knew whether I wanted to go into like musical theatre or be a pop recording artist or uh, do backing vocals or, you know, wh whatever capacity it was. To be honest, I was just happy singing. I just love singing. And I think that is sort of the key point here that for me, it was never about fame. I, I never really wanted or craved the limelight. I craved singing. And, um, and as a result, uh, I, you know, falling into the, the line of the, the work that I do. That's why it suits me so well, because, you know, doing backing vocals, doing recording sessions and doing vocal coaching, I'm ticking all those boxes without having the stress and pressure of being in the limelight. Um, which famous singers have you worked with? Oh, gosh, I've been very lucky. I've worked with, um, well... I mean, bearing in mind my capacity as a backing singer for all those years, you know, and I still do it to this day, as long as, as well as vocal coaching. I've, I've worked with Jason Derulo, Michael Bolton, Je uh, Jennifer Hudson, a little mix, James Arthur. I mean, I've been in Katy Perry. I've been incredibly lucky to have worked with some really, really amazing artists and helped them develop their voice. So, yeah. Wow. I heard uh, that you, you worked with Amy Winehouse. Is that correct? Yeah, I taught Amy when she came to the National Youth Jazz Orchestra when she was 16. Wow. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, you know, we had, we had a bit of time together then and she was exceptional then, you know. Mm. Did you, did you think that she was like going to be a big star like she was? 100%. She, she was a star from right from the very beginning. And what I really admired about her that I didn't have myself, which was that she knew exactly who she was as an artist. Mm. And that's something I always struggled with. So Amy came in at 16 knowing, you know, what she wanted to sing, what her sound was, 
she was already writing her own songs at 16 and playing instruments. So I really, really admired her. Even though I was a teacher, I admired her. And I actually looked up to her to her because I was only 19 myself. Um, yeah. And, and is there some young singer that you've worked with recently that you think is going to be the next big thing? Actually, there is. There is. Um, all I'm going to say is a girl band, but I can't give you any more. But they're... Yeah, watch out. Okay. <laughs> There's a new girl band in town, but I can't. I'm working with them at the moment. They're amazing, but uh, and there is there is another young artist um, which is on the horizon, which unfortunately I can't give the name of. But yeah, there there are some really amazing, amazing new artists, and I think what I'm loving about what, what, what I found about these artists that I'm working with at the moment is that they're so hardworking, and it's you know you really don't become a pop star overnight. You know, it's in, in terms of being a pop star, for want of a better term, and longevity and sticking around, you know, those who do stick around is what I mean, really. It, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. They know who they are and what, uh, you know, what they want to write about and they learn and they work hard and they work on improving themselves. And that's what's really evident to me is that these kids that I'm working with at the moment, I say kids, I mean, they're in their twenties, but you know what I mean, mm. are, are doing, are working really, really hard. And as a result, I think they've got a very bright future ahead of them. And you've been working on, uh, like I mentioned before, the X Factor and Britain's Got Talent. When you're working with these artists, do you, do you guess correctly who's going to win? Like, um, to be honest, quite often, yes. I think mm. on these shows, you know, I mean, it's not just me. Like, I think anybody can spot a star. Like, you always know the person that stick. It's the person that stands out. It's the person that moves you the most. You know, I would say the, imp the, the, the perfect vocal is the imperfect vocal. So for those who are listening, like, don't ever feel like you have to have the biggest range in the world or sing the highest. It's not about that. It's about how your voice and how your music make people feel so you can have a really small range you can have a really quiet tiny voice and it can be the you can be the, the best artist in the room because it's about how you connect your lyric it's about how you as a result then connect to your audience how you make your audience feel and that's so important so I think yes you can always spot the one who is going to do the work the best but uh, it's certainly not about who can sing the highest or the loudest and what advice would you give for uh, the teens that are listening now that would like to get into the music business and be singers and pop stars? What advice would you give to them? Well, I think, you know, first of all, exactly what I just said, you know, don't feel like you have to, to sing a certain way to succeed. You know, if you sing differently to everybody else and you, and you see that as possibly not a good thing, then please, please know that it's a good thing. If you're different, it's good. If you sound different to everybody else, it's good because it makes you distinctable. It makes distinctive rather. It makes you stand out. And um, and I would say there is a place for everybody. So, you know, there's no reason why you can't have a career as a singer if you work hard for it. You know, it's not something that you should just think, oh, I decided I want to be a singer today. You know, one thing that used to irk me a little bit on shows like X Factor is that when people say, well, you know, when they come off crying their eyes, like, okay, this is my dream, this is my dream, this is what I want my whole life. And then I say, have you ever had, ever had a singing lesson? Nope. <laughs> you know, so it's like, get, get some training. If, you re if this really is your dream, if this really is what you want, learn an instrument, get some, sing some proper singing lessons. You know, if money's an issue, for example, I have my app that you can download. It's super cheap and it's, it's a great starting point if you don't know um, where to start because I do I, I have this app the vocal coach that I made in lockdown and it has a great sort of introduction for those who are beginners I mean it's really designed for existing singers as well so it doesn't matter what you know there's something for every level on there but if you kind of don't know where to start um, it's it's got videos you know you can go to the easy exercises they're all marked easy medium and hard you can you can go to the easy exercises and just watch I, ha I have videos of me explaining how to do these exercises and then you just do them every day it's basically like having me there as a vocal coach with you um and and just to ensure that you're doing it properly just keep going back and watching the videos but so I think yeah training 
not comparing yourself to anyone else is my absolute golden rule do not compare yourself to anyone else you are everybody is unique you are unique you are special that's what makes you so wonderfully different from everybody else and you must see that as a positive positive. and finally just go to open mic night you know go to london be seen be heard and um just uh it's a really the, the social networking side of it is a really important aspect of it so you know or get yourself videos online if you don't live in london or that sort of thing or if you're younger um you know doing putting yourself out there on youtube and instagram and things like that are really helpful as well yeah. it worked for jesse J. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned uh, you mentioned your app um and i mean i i haven't yet downloaded it and you've just explained what it is i thought how can you learn to sing through an app? And you're saying, so basically you're there, yeah? And you they're just watching videos and there's all exercises on it? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Okay, it's a great question. How can you learn to sing in an app? Well, basically I've recorded, I made a series of exercises while working on shows like Britain's Got Talent and X Factor that I, that I invented myself. I created these exercises myself because these were tools that I, a kind of methodology, if you like, that I created while working on these shows. And I just thought, wouldn't it be amazing? Because I, whenever I have my private clients or one-on-one, -on -one, you know, one-on-ones that I have with artists and private clients, you know, there are these sort of instant result techniques and tools and tips and things, and also long-term things that you go away and work on to develop your voice or whatever it is that you want to work on whether it's your you know it might be your range or you might have a really obvious break or you want to work on your agility for riffing and that sort of thing and I just thought I get asked these questions time and time again why not first of all I made them into really fun exercises so a lot of the time for me I found as a singer there weren't really any inspiring uh, warm-up exercises out there so I've rather than it just be to a boring piano I've made these exercises that are really funky they've got like backing vocals on and they sound like they sound like pop songs you know they sound like a Bruno Mars album that was the kind of brief that I gave my producer I want to make an album of warm-ups that sound like a Bruno Mars album so um, they're really fun to do and then I just thought well I'm going to put a little video with each one just so it has exactly as, the, as I would do in my lessons I would you know film myself and send it to you of me how of me doing the exercises and how to execute them properly and how to get the most out of them how to make sure you're doing them safely and how to get the quickest results and then it's just all in the app wow. it's super simple and then I've also put things like vocal health there's a nice easy list of what to eat what not to eat for me I don't like things to be complicated I like just to be everything in black and white and just told me this is what to eat this is what not to eat this is what exercise to do you know, if you want to include, if you want to improve your agility and do riffs, you go to the riff exercise. If you want to go to the breathe, if you want to improve your breathing, you go straight to the breathing exercise. You know, they're not trick names. They're called riff exercise mm -hmm. and breathing exercise, you know, and agility and head voice exercise and things like that. So um, it's really, really simple. Exactly what I would have wanted growing up and learning and training. And how does the app help uh, with mental issues? Well, this is really a really interesting topic for me because um during lockdown obviously everybody's mental health was affected um i think it's it's safe to say everybody's was and and myself included you know nobody nobody could prepare themselves for what was going to happen and how everyone's life was going to change and i think i certainly learned coping mechanisms throughout lockdown myself which i then have now decided to use which I then I now use with my clients and it helps them and I think a big part of what I do is people are coming out of lockdown you know singers or people that lo either love to sing as a hobby or are professional singers and have lost confidence in their voice or their singing because they haven't sung for so long and for whatever reason you know however lockdown affected you whether it's with depression whether it's anxiety whether it's induced panic attacks um you know there are some really amazing te techniques and tools and ways that you can help with this and for me i i started suffering with panic attacks about two years ago and anxiety which i've never really suffered with before and so i had to learn a coping me mechanism i'm a real fixer i like to try and fix things and find solutions to things so um i discovered uh, this exercise, this breathing exercise, which really, really helped me, which is going to be included, it's going to be added to the app in about 
two or three weeks. Uh, and it's a method of breathing out longer than you breathe in. And it's really, really helpful. And my breathing exercise is called 7-11. And it's a really simple exercise where you breathe in for seven through your nose, through your nose, and you breathe out for 11 that through your mouth. And if you're, and I really found that this helped me um, during my times of anxiety, during my times of panic, it instantly calmed me down. And it's not, it's not a sort of um, uh, hypothetical solution. It's something that is scientifically works. If you're breathing out more carbon dioxide than you're breathing in oxygen, what it does is it taps into your parasympathetic nervous system. And, um, and what that does is it, that feeling of being zen and calm, it, it takes you there mm. and it takes you away from it being in your sympathetic nervous system which is what makes you feel the shallow breathing and like you can't cope so yeah I really urge people to try it I think and also singing is just so great for the soul singing is brilliant every you know if you can talk you can sing everyone loves to sing come on let's be honest and whether you're good or bad it doesn't matter I want people to do this app to download it not just to um you know get better at singing but to just have some fun and um and, and find coping mechanisms and, and find ways of coping rather with um with mental health issues such as depression anxiety which you know let's be honest we all suffer with and I'm really happy and open to talk about these things because I think it's great that people are talking about it more because it, it normalizes it and that's what we need to do with it wow and that's all on the app it's called the vocal coach and it's available it's called the vocal yeah. absolutely it's called the vocal coach it's available on android and for iphone users um, there is a whole new bunch of exercises being added to it in the next few weeks, which I'm working hard on at the moment. But yeah, everything, all my basic, everything I've learned over the last 20 years is currently in the, in the current version anyway. I'm super proud of it. it took me ages to make, it took me a lot of money to make, uh, and I put everything into it. And it's available now. It's, it's still at the introductory offer at the moment, which is $9.99 outright. You don't have to pay anything else ever again for it. But in a few weeks, when I add all the new um, exercises and features and things, it will go to subscription. So it's a sort of early bird introductory offer at the moment, which you can buy for tenner. Um, so keep your eye out for that. But if you do miss that and it goes subscription, then it's going to be it's going to be like the price of a cup of coffee per month. I haven't okay. actually figured out exactly how much it's going to be yet. I'm still working it out, but it's, I want to make it cheap and affordable for everybody. Okay. What well, what music do you listen to? What? Ooh, uh, I like this question. So, I mean, I listen to all sorts. My my clients keep my keep me in tune with the current charts. <laughs> so that's how I kind of keep up with what's going on. But I mean, my real love is funk and and blues and soul so i love aretha franklin my mm. absolute favorite is shaka khan i love um etta james you know i love bluesy soulful singers that really move you um and that you can yeah and, and doesn't matter how cheesy or old it is i just love you know i love stevie wonder i love babyface i love brian mcknight i love mariah carey i just love really good singers love freddie mercury yeah good singers you know mm. okay i've done a lot of things live on radio in my 35 year career but i've never yes. sang on radio because everybody tells me that i'm tone deaf and is there anything that you could teach me quickly to improve my singing right okay i'm going to teach you a stylistic tool called twang Twang. Okay. okay. <laughs> twang. I think I've got a feeling, babe, that you're going to be good at the twang. So twang is a tool that is used in singing and especially in pop singing with a lot of the current artists today. You know, um, Ariana Grande uses twang. Kelly Clarkson uses twang. Katy Perry uses twang. It's such a useful tool that you can apply to your voice to help you reach those higher notes. So I want you to just do this sound for me. Nya, 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 nya. Try that for me. Nya, 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 nya. Yay! <laughs> okay, we've got some great twang going on there. Can we try this now? Nya, nya, nya. Like three blind mice. Nya, nya, nya. Hey, there was one note that was actually in tune there. We're improving. <laughs> That's the first time We're ever. improving. We're improving. <laughs> now, I want you to take this twang and I want you to keep those cheeks high and those nose wrinkles. I want you to sing. You raise me up. Let's try that. Go. You raise me up. 
<laughs> oh, okay. One more. Listen to me. You raise me up so I can. What's the word? Stand on mountains. Let's try that one. Go. You raise me up. So okay, I... let's take it lower. Let's take it lower. You raise me up. Go. You raise me up. Oh my gosh, we're getting back more in tune now. So, really? so good. And then what you would do is, yeah, but that's not bad at all. And I think what's great about it, honestly, I know you kind of like laugh and say you're tone deaf and you can't sing, but honestly, it's so much fun. It's so it much is. fun learning. And I think what people would need to remember is like, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. It really doesn't. Mm. I just want people to just enjoy learning to sing, enjoy trying these exercises because, you know, we're not saving lives here. You've got nothing to lose. And if you have a fun 10 minutes or half an hour doing it, amazing, you, that's brilliant. And you definitely will have learned something. You definitely will have improved. And I think if you can do those, you know, five minutes every day, you're definitely going to improve. Wow. It's been fantastic talking to you, Annabelle. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody, download her app. It's called The Vocal Coach. And you will uh, get to think. I'm going to download it. And, you know, in a few months' time, I'll be... I'll be pitch perfect. Yeah. And you know what, guys? If you download it, like I'd love to hear from you. Come follow me on Instagram, the vocal coach official. Send me, like DM me and let me know what you think of it. And you know, if you have any videos of yourself doing the exercises, tag me and I'll repost them. Um, but honestly, just go for it. Don't judge yourselves, guys. Just go for it. Have fun. Give yourselves credit for trying. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. And remember, singing is for absolutely everybody. And it's not, it's nobody's business to tell you whether you can or you can't do it. It's something that is totally for you and for you only. Thank you very much for talking to us, Annabelle. Thanks for having me. Bye. Deepers Radio.